Hello and good afternoon. It is three o'clock and 37 seconds. And this is the Buzz News with me, Miranda. And me, Liz. Earlier this week, we investigated how much electricity you could save with one of these. Over to Catherine for the report. I'm here with one of these, an energy efficient monitor, to find out how much energy you can save. Yesterday, we gave Mr Moore one of these to see how much energy his family used in a day. Let's go and find out how they got on. How did you find using the monitors? I found using the electricity monitors quite easy once they're installed. And not everybody would be happy perhaps rummaging around in their electricity meter cupboard because you have a, a little clip which comes apart and you have to clip it around the electricity wire. Um, I'm quite happy to do that, but not everybody might be. Elderly people might struggle if the meter was up high or down low. But once it was installed, it worked very easily. It was good. Press the button and the meter comes on and it shows you how much electricity you're using instantly. But it did make us aware of, of how much things cost. What did you find the most interesting about the energy you use? Well, personally for me, I knew things like kettles and ovens and showers would consume a lot of energy, but it's, it's when you plug it into the fridge and the freezer that just do sit there ticking away all day long. It really makes you realise you can see the little meter ticking up and you think, five minutes, that's just cost me another penny. And you think, when you add that up over the days, the weeks, the months, the years, those appliances cost you all the time. What surprised you the most? Um, the thing that surprised me most was how uh, interested my children were in it, because they could see how much electricity they were using just by switching a light on. And anything that makes my children aware of how much they're costing me is a good thing in my eyes. Earlier I spoke to Dr Matt Prescott, an energy expert, to find out the benefits of using an electricity monitor. On average, um, a typical household is able to save between 10 and 20% um, on their electricity use when they use an electricity monitor. I've calculated that if everybody on the Isles of Scilly used a, an energy monitor and cut their electricity use by 10%, um, the islands would save £24 worth of electricity every hour. Over the course of a day, they would save £576, and over the course of a year, it would be over £200,000 a year. Well, obviously, the Isles of Scilly on their own are quite a small place. There's only 2,000 people who live here. But across the United Kingdom, if everybody tried as hard as the Isles of Scilly, uh, we'd be getting into millions and millions of pounds worth of electricity could be saved. We wouldn't have to build so many power stations, and we would cut down the amount of uh, carbon dioxide we were putting into the atmosphere. And we'd set a great example to the rest of the world. So I hope that the Isles of Scilly can act as role models for everybody else and really go for it on E-Day. So that's what the expert thinks, but what about the public? Shanna went to find out more. Hello, I'm here in town to find out if the public know about real-time energy displays. Can you yeah. tell me what one of these things are? Uh, no idea, to be honest. Can you guess? Some kind of temperature thing? Um, it looks like one of those Nintendo brain things. No idea, no. Um, a mini CD player? No, I don't know. A little ipod -y thing? It's a energy efficient monitor. Oh, that's what I was going to say next. Is it an energy efficient monitor? So, that's what the public think about real-time energy displays. Back to you, Catherine. So we have found out that electricity monitors can help you with your bills and also help prevent climate change. But the big question is, why are not enough people using them? The answer is simple, not enough people know about them. This is Catherine reporting for the Buzz News, back to the studio. Thank you Catherine for that absolutely thrilling report. Miranda, Miranda, Miranda. <laughs> now over to our second story where Shannon reports from Pebham Chocolate Shop on the Isles of Scilly. Wait, we're getting something in. Shannon, if you do want to buy us any chocolate, please feel free. If you love chocolate as much as I do, then you'll be interested to know that the Isles of Scilly is home to its very own eco-friendly, fair trade, organic, cycling chocolatier teacher. Fingers crossed I might get a taste, so let's go in and find out. Can you tell me who you are and what you do? My name is Mr Lehman and I work here at Pedlam. We are a small husband and wife partnership and we opened a chocolate shop about 18 months ago. Um, we chose to sell organic and fair trade chocolate 
and we make the chocolate in the kitchen next door and we sell it here in our chocolate shop to people who would like to try some lovely chocolate. Why did you choose to make fair trade organic chocolate? We chose to make and sell fair trade organic chocolate um, for the main reason of ethics. Chocolate is a luxury item and it's only produced in those countries where, as compared to our standards of living, their quality of life is very poor. It is therefore important with chocolate in particular that they get a fair price for all their work. But we also stipulate that we want our chocolate to be organic because we want to reduce the amount of pesticides that are used. We want to make sure that our chocolate is grown on farmland that hasn't been anywhere contaminated, that it actually is going to therefore make the cacao beans and ultimately the chocolate a better product. Why do you collect your goods by bicycle, not car? I collect my goods by bicycle rather than car because I can. And here on the Isles of Scilly, we are quite fortunate in that most of our resources are within a two, three mile radius. Obviously, there are people here who do need a car and transport to get some of their heavier goods around the island. But at the moment, for what I'm able to do and able to use, I do have that choice. I think if you have a choice, you should take the one that is least damaging on the environment. And for us, that means using a bicycle. How did you get your Green Tourism Award? The Green Tourism Award is something that we were awarded this year. It's an award that uh, measures you on a number of different strands. Um, if you look around the shop, you can see that we've, um, we've used paints that is um, uh, eco-friendly. The furniture we use is reusable, it's recyclable, it's things that we've taken from other places. Our fridges are all air appliance. We, we measure and monitor our water and electricity consumption. Our packaging is made of biodegradable materials and we reduce as much as we can on packaging. All of those aspects build into the Green Tourism Award to make sure that you are having as little impact as you, as you can on the environment uh, and therefore you know, win such an award and we were very pleased to get the silver. Does this make your chocolate tastier? Chocolate can only taste as good as your taste buds are. It can certainly make you feel a lot less guilty about having chocolate if you know it's fair trade and organic and you know it's come from a place that has tried its best to be friendly with the environment. But ultimately, Shannon, the taste is yours. So this proves you can still be a chocolatier and good to the environment. So for all you chocolate lovers out there, if you're looking for some guilt-free chocolate, this is the place to come. This is Shannon reporting for The Buzz News. Back to you in the studio. We're on <laughs> um, Thank you, Shannon, for that report. Um, that was The Buzz News. Tune in next week where we talk to Tom about how he was reunited with his stunt puffin. Um, this is Elizabeth and Miranda signing off for the best news. news.